to make a clear cut assumption, but they may be associated, and more experiments are definitely required to obtain convincing conclusions. Uh, the possible functions of nesting nesting may have a pivotal role in the transport and secretory functions, and nesting may also be involved in structural remodeling of tannocytes uh, required to regulate the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone. So, uh, where should we go from here? Firstly, we should explore the possibility of other proteins. We shouldn't keep ourselves constrained to simply looking at nesting and proliferation. We should look at GLAST, which is an, um, an immature repentant cell marker. We should look at biomentin to, to see if maybe they are involved in cell division. And uh, we should also study proliferation in cells of the third ventricle for longer durations <coughs> and by changing the microenvironment. Because what happens is these cells are currently present in a very quiescent state. And Probably we're just not motivating them enough to come out of that state and actually start dividing, which needs to be done. And so I know all that I've told you so far may seem, I mean, so basically there is no clear cut hypothesis so far, but there's one thing for sure, and that is that nesting is currently being expressed in mature cells or cells that are not dividing rapidly, which means that using it as a universal stem cell marker is kind of slightly out of the way, because we might get misleading results. So it's important that we realize that nesting may not <coughs> always be present only in stem cells, and it may be present in other areas also. And I'd like to thank uh, my, the Khalil Laboratory, especially Professor Ronald Khalil. I mean, uh, he has been the most brilliant PI ever. He's always, he's literally guided me by hand and shown me how to do everything. I'd like to thank everyone else in the lab, Michael Hendrickson for showing me how to do the imaging, Scott for teaching me the entire immunostaining and always being there as whenever I had a problem I'd go to him and he'd always have the answer. Um, I want to thank uh, Maria for the sessions over ice cream that we had. <laughs> I'd like to thank Professor Asim Ansari and I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Jenny Darwin and Professor Steve Johnson, they're here and they took me into their own program and treated me just the same. And I'd like to thank my fellow Qur'an scholars and the Qur'an scholars program, IUSSTF and DVT for their funding. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take questions. If you don't think Nestin is full, the full story, what else do you think would be a good marker that we could use? And where do you think Nestin should set in that game? <coughs> so um, that's the problem. Currently, I did, there are many reports which state that Nestin is not a, not a reliable stem cell marker. But simply due to lack of other options, we have been using Nestin. But however, there are more other stem cell markers, such as SOX2, which uh, is expressed purely in stem cells. So maybe instead of what I propose, instead of simply staying for nesting and saying that this may be a stem cell, we should use other markers also. And maybe if all of them are being expressed at the same time, then we can conclude that it indeed is a stem cell. point earlier that Vimentin stabilizes Nestin bundling, and then Nestin destabilizes Vimentin. Yes. Is this a dynamic process, or once you set up the Nestin? So uh, by assembly, I mean that so we have these monomers of the protein. And considering they're intermediate filament proteins, these monomers have to become dimerized, and then they become tetramerized to form the entire cytoskeleton structure. So uh, bimentin is necessary for nestin assembly because nestin is not capable of self-assembly. Usually the IFs are capable of self-assembly, but nestin has a very short N-terminus sequence, protein sequence, due to which it requires bimentin. And uh, the converse for, uh, for nestin being important for bimentin disassembly, uh, it's a very recent paper, in fact. And so this has been observed only in dividing cells. Which means it's it's an ongoing process. It's not just a static one. So at the end there, you had an interesting idea. These rats are like that picture says they're just basically sitting in a cage, 
doing nothing, eating, sleeping, and so forth. Do you have ideas as to maybe ways to challenge them and and either with, I don't know, change environment or, or toxins or something that might get turnover in the cells in the third ventricle, in the pendable cells? I mean, it seems like they're, they might be turning over slowly, but okay. what, kind of, what kind of things would you do to kind of maybe so, get uh, them to go? And there have been reports which state that under injury conditions, the cells begin to divide ra more rapidly. So uh, some reports have been conducted on specific injury areas to uh, see if the rate of proliferation has increased, but nothing convincing has been discovered so far. So maybe if we could try and make more injury uh, conditions maybe near the third ventricle or somewhere around the brainstem, which may affect proliferation. And then there are also other factors such as uh, maybe some kind of medications which do, but again, they wouldn't be convincing enough to prove spontaneous proliferation. So that's the thing. That, that's a totally different area where we'll just be proving that they are capable of dividing, but that's not what they're normally doing in the first place. 